name's Adam. I'm one of the leaders here at the church. And I just want to take a brief moment to introduce you to a couple of friends of ours that are going to be speaking to you this morning. Uh, and they are Brittany and Damian Dunn. They are uh, missionaries, U.S.-based missionaries through a program called Youth Alive. And so they're going to be here this morning and they're going to tell you a little bit about what they do and, and what they feel uh, God has to say to you this morning. So I'm going to turn that over to them. Thank you for being here with us and we appreciate you and we love you. Hi, New Life. Uh, I'm Damien and this is my wife, Brittany Dunn, and we are Oregon Youth Alive Missionary Associates. We are super excited to be with you this morning. Uh, we want to share with you a little bit about what Oregon Youth Alive is and really what God is doing through this ministry and all around the state. So uh, thank you for being with us this morning and we can't wait to get right into it. Yeah, so like you said, my name is Brittany and um, we have been working alongside U.S. missionary Tom Bachman for about six years now. Um, before that, just a little bit about us. Um, I am from Silverton over by Silver Falls and Oregon Gardens and all that. And I like to tell people that I was born in the pew of an AG church. Um, I grew up you know, as a pastor's kid in church all the time um, and really just had God that, that whole time in my life. Um, and went to Bible college knowing that I was called to ministry at an early age. Uh, Damien, however, came from a rather different background. He was from Pendleton all the way over in Eastern Oregon and um, grew up completely different than me. There was a lot of abuse and drugs and alcohol, um, broken family, and he found God later in life. But it was at a youth convention, um, which is basically just a really large conference for, that the AG puts on here in Oregon um, for all middle school and high schoolers. And that's where God found him and um, he was saved. We then met up at Bible College, um, both with a call to ministry on our lives. And we actually got the opportunity to have uh, Pastor Larry as one of our teachers yeah. um, for a couple years, mm -hmm. a few different classes. And Pastor Terry was in those classes with us. And so that was really fun. So we've known them for quite a long time. Um, so we've been married for 11 years now. And um, some of the things, just a couple things about us. Uh, I, I coach basketball at McNary High School in Kaiser, where we live. And um, we love board games. We go disc golfing. We're not very good, but we try. And uh, so we're just kind of normal people doing what God asks us to do. And uh, so, yeah, so thank you again for having us here today. Yeah, so we, we want to share with you a little bit about um, our ministry and kind of what the Lord has allowed us to do and be a part of. Um, it really starts, like Brittany said, after college, uh, we actually were youth pastors for a time in uh, Lyons, a little town of Lyons, just east of Salem. And we were there for a few years doing ministry in the community, and it was awesome, you know, getting, getting to see God move in, in students. And then he actually moved us to Lebanon, and we did ministry there as youth pastors. And uh, throughout our history, we could really see that the things that we're passionate about are helping young people to fulfill the call of God on their lives. So that, that's like the number one. That's the thing we're most excited about. And that's what we did in the past. Currently, the Lord about six years ago moved us to uh, what we're doing now, which is serving alongside uh, Tom Bachman as a U.S. missionary. And we are missionaries to the youth and children of Oregon. So we are Youth Alive Missionary Associates. Um, and you may be going, okay, that's cool. What is Youth Alive? Uh, so basically... Youth Alive exists for the sole purpose of reaching the 900,000 teenagers and kids in Oregon. Uh, that is our number one goal is we want to minister to the, to the youth, to the children, to this next generation in our state. Secondly, we really want to equip youth pastors and students to reach out on their school campus um, and in various ways in the community. Youth Alive is very passionate about not just um, not just students within the church, but also in our communities and our towns all over the state. And then lastly, uh, Youth Alive is all about serving the local church. You know, we still believe that the church is the only plan, the plan A, the only vessel that the Lord has chosen to impact this world. And we, as Youth Alive, want to make uh, a difference and be a resource to our churches. We want to equip pastors through speaking or through training leaders. And so that's a large part of what we do. So within Youth Alive, there is something called the Oregon Youth Alive Ministry Academy, and we just call it Oyama because it's just way less, <laughs> way, le way less to say. And we are the directors of Oyama, of the Ministry Academy, and essentially what it is is a 26-month um, pastor trade school 
sometimes our students call it boot camp, which yeah. we take as a compliment, so it's fine. <laughs> and um, essentially, they come to us at, at, normally as young people, but we've had people of all ages. And they say, you know what, I feel like I have a call on my life to vocational ministry, which means ministry as like basically their job, as what they want to do with their life. And they say, you know, how do I get there? How do I do this? And so our job for those 26 months is to disciple them, um, to help them grow, to give them all kinds of knowledge that we can, um, help them get through school and give them practical hands-on training. So, you know, like, like Damien said, like we do this because we want to be a blessing, not only to the churches of Oregon, but we also want to be a blessing to those who feel that call in their life and don't really know how to get there. They don't know how to facilitate that. So basically there's four core priorities that help us to do this. The first one is through education. So mm -hmm. they attend school at Northwest University, Oregon, which is out in Salem. And it is the same school that we attended where we met Pastor Larry and Pastor Terry. Um, and they go there for the whole 26 months. So at the end of that time, they have taken theology classes, leadership classes, um, all, all the different things. We let them handle the theology, you know, main theology side of it. And when they're done, they'll have enough classes to get their credentials with the Assemblies of God. So they'll be licensed pastors, which is awesome. Um, the second thing is life skills. So we get, like I said, a lot of younger people, and sometimes they don't know how to like talk on the phone or balance their budget or change a tire. And so we want to help them to do those things so that they will be productive, effective, just humans and be able to balance life and work and, and be adults. Um, so that's the second thing that we do. The third thing, I wouldn't say is the most important thing, but it is a huge piece of what we do, yeah. is called coaching. And Damien, myself, and Tom Bachman meet with our students weekly, one-on-one, -on -one, and we discuss all kinds of life things Everything. from – stewardship to integrity, um, purity, serving, um, how to make disciples. We want to know what's going on in their life so that we can help them personally grow in the way that they need to grow. And so we talk about all kinds of things, get really deep with them. And um, we love it. We, we feel like it's a huge piece of their personal discipleship. Um, and, and it's really, really important to what we do for Oyama. And then the last thing, the fourth core priority that we have is ministry opportunities. And we want to give them all the hands-on training that we can while they're with us. And so we put a lot into 26 months. The first thing is they start out um, with a job shout out at a larger church in Oregon. And then they'll go from that to visiting a couple dozen churches all throughout our state of different sizes, different communities. Um, they will go to, you know, Wednesday night stuff, Sunday, Saturday, whatever it might be. And they get to see youth ministries, kids ministries, Sunday services, um, even, you know, like celebrate recovery type things, yep. whatever we can give them just so they can have exposure to a wide range of things. Um, the third thing that they do is then in the summer, they spend uh, an internship at a medium sized church. And the, then their entire second year is spent at one place with a pastoral internship. And they get to do a lot more of kind of less observing and more actually doing. And they get to do a lot of ministry in that year and really be in, in one place in one community for a while. So that's a really awesome part of it. Um, outside of that, they help at every event that our network mm -hmm. has from, uh, you know, the youth convention we talked about. There's a kids convention, any camps, um, you know, they, they stack chairs, they run cameras, they run sound, they do lights, they um, serve food, anything that they can do to help in that way, we have them do. So basically, when all of that is done, all the 26 months that they're with us, they then are put into a job fair that we call it. And pastors from all over our state come, they interview our students, and then they find out, you know, where does God want me to go? And so, the, you know, we're all leading up to this, okay, now we're going we're gonna to get you in a church and you're going to start doing what God has called you to do in the local context. So we do all that coordination yep. of internships, of church visits, of coaching weekly. We meet on Wednesdays pretty much all day, teaching, reading books together. We're even doing a series right now on world religions. Mm -hmm. um, so anything that we can do, we do on Wednesdays that way. And um, that's kind of our job with Oyama. Yeah. Uh, the cool thing is that right now there are 26 Oyama graduates serving in ministry capacities all over the state of Oregon. Uh, we have youth pastors, kids pastors, worship leaders. We have a lead pastor, a community outreach pastor, media pastors, 26 graduates that are currently serving as pastors throughout the state of Oregon. We even have a couple that have gone off to Texas and are doing ministry in Texas, but we're not going to talk about that betrayal. <laughs> it's a, it's a little, it's a, it hurts my heart a little bit because we're so passionate about Oregon. 
Um, you see, this is this is why we've given our lives to this. We've given our lives to Oyama, to to training leaders because we're passionate about seeing young people fulfill the call of God on their lives. Yeah. You see, our students are really our heroes. The Oyama graduates that are serving in ministry, they choose every day to say yes to God. And we get to know them. We get to know them deeply over their couple of years with us. And, and to see the growth and the change and the discipleship and the ways that God shows up, it, it's so encouraging and it's such a blessing to see what God's doing. You know, I just want to share a, a couple of quick stories. Um, number one, we, we have a young lady who she came to us and, and her name was Amanda. And she came to us from Eastern Oregon, from Milton Freewater, way out in Northeastern Oregon. And I remember she came to us and during her time, she always said, I don't ever want to go back to my hometown. I can never do it. And, you know, throughout her time with us, she continued to say, like, God could call me anywhere, just never back home. She made the mistake of saying that. Because the thing is that the Lord began to give her a heart for her family, a heart for her friends, a heart for the people that she grew up with. And during that ministry fair that Brittany was talking about, her old lead pastor came and interviewed her. And she instantly felt the Lord say, I'm calling you to go back home. And so right now she's doing kids ministry and helping out with youth ministry in Milton Freewater in her hometown. And she's making a huge impact in her church and in the whole community. She's been able to disciple and raise up leaders of her own. It's awesome to see stuff like that. Another example would be a young man named Kyle, who he's serving in ministry up in Portland. And I remember when he was in Oyama, he would say things like, you know, Damien, I will do whatever God wants me to do, but I don't ever want to be a lead pastor. And I'd say, Kyle, why, why don't you want to be a lead pastor? And he would say, you know, I love people. I just really don't like older people. And I would say, oh, okay, that's, that's a little weird. And he's like, yeah, I just, I struggle. I don't know how to connect. And I just feel like I'll never be called to them. So about a year ago, Kyle accepted a lead pastor position up in Portland. And I asked him, I said, you know, you always said you'd never be a lead pastor because then you'd have to deal with older people and that you felt like you couldn't do that. What changed? And he told me, he said, Damien, God loves older people. God loves all people. So I love all people. See, stories like this, are, are, this is why we love doing it, because we get to see God move in our students' lives. We get to see them move him into ministry positions and into roles that they never thought that they'd be in. And he uses them. He uses them greatly just because they're willing to say yes, just because they're willing to say, God, whatever I have to give, I give to you. We love being a part of that. There's a huge need for pastors. You know, it's, it's especially with COVID happening, you know, you look at the statistics and that, that just came out with the Assemblies of God, just in the Assemblies of God alone, um, one third of AG pastors stepped away because of COVID or, or during COVID. Um, and, and there's about 30%, they say, that, that really strongly considered it. And, and are still in ministry, but but that's a lot of pastors. And there was a need before that. And so the need obviously isn't getting any smaller. Um, and there's churches in every single community. You know, every year when we have our ministry fair and we, we have, you know, these students that, that are with us, we only have, you know, a handful that we, that we interview. And there's, you know, last year, I think we had 30 something pastors yep. that came and said, you know what, I need help. I need a youth pastor. I need a kids pastor. Or there are board members like, we need a lead pastor. And they came and they interviewed our students. And, you know, we love the ones that get to go out and we love those churches that get to have that. But there's ones that walk away without, without that and they still need pastors. And so we want to be part of that solution. We want to be um, something that God can use to, you know, help create sort of a pipeline of, you know, let's disciple these, these students and let's get them into churches fulfilling the calls to impact these communities. Yeah. So yeah, again, this is why we do this. This is why Youth Alive exists, is to help people reach the call of God on their lives. Uh, Youth Alive actually has a motto, we believe in the idea of growing, going, and giving your life away. We believe that all of God's people are called to always be growing, to be going, and to give their lives away for the gospel. And our, our theme verses for, for these three words can be found in these, in these passages I'm going to share. Number one is to grow. And that is written by uh, the Apostle Paul. He says in Philippians chapter 3, Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage, so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depended on faith. And this is the part. 
I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. See, we believe that God is calling us to know him, to always be coming to know him more and more, to always be growing. Number one, the thing we're most passionate about is grow. Mm -hmm. Secondly is go. And uh, when we think about what passage really encapsulates this idea of go, it's it's the Great Commission found in, you know, Matthew chapter 28. These are Jesus' words to his disciples after the resurrection, before he's about to ascend back to heaven. It says, Jesus came and told his disciples, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all of the commands that I've given you. And be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. This idea of go, you know, we don't even have a, a, a proper interpretation for this word of go. It doesn't even translate well from the Hebrew language into English because this idea of go conveys more than just, well, let me walk out the door. It literally means that as you are going, as you're living your life, as you are walking, as you're breathing, as you're doing the things God has called you to do, make disciples. As you're moving, make disciples. As you're moving, teach them to obey. And no matter what, the Lord's with you. So first off, we grow and we go, and lastly, we give our life away. And in Luke chapter 9, Jesus says, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross daily and follow me. If you try to hang on to your own life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. Give your life away. We believe that this is God's call to all people. That this is how you find out, what, what am I meant to do? What does God want to use me for? It's to grow, to go, and to give our lives away. So, you know, we're seeing, we're, we're, we love seeing young people give their life away yeah. in this way. To what God has called them to do. They're being obedient in mm -hmm. that. And, you know, our students, we want them to love Jesus with all their hearts so that they can then go make a difference in their church, in their home, um, in their school, their, their town, wherever it might be, their, a community that God has called them to. And, and this is our greatest desire is we want people to live out the abundant life that God calls us to in his word and to help others do the exact same. Yeah. So we want to leave you with this question. What does Jesus want to do with you? How does he want you to be growing, going, and giving your life away? Because the truth is, Jesus is the God of the impossible. Mm -hmm. He can forgive any sin. He can break any addiction. He can change how we think. He can change how we feel. He can change situations. He can do anything. He's the God of the impossible. Imagine what Jesus could do with just one or two people, a small group of people, saying that they are willing to do whatever it takes to make a difference, yeah. whatever it takes to be faithful to the call of God. See, he's done it in my life. He's done it in our students. Mm -hmm. And I have story after story of how he's doing it all over Oregon. Will you commit to grow, to go, and to give your life away? We have a couple of ways that we would ask that you could partner with us in, in, in Youth Alive and how you could be growing and going and giving your life away. Yeah, so the first way is is to pray. And, you know, sometimes it sounds cliche that, you know, missionaries come and they say, oh, can you pray for us? But it really is huge. When we know that we have people around the state that are praying for us, that are invested in this mission, and our students know that too, mm. it makes a huge difference. And it helps them not to feel so alone. It helps us to really, you know, push forward. And, and God equips us in that, in that way when you guys are praying for us. So, you know, pray for us as leaders. Pray for Tom. Um, pray for Oyama, our, our students. You know, they, they go through a lot. We have students that come from all walks of life and it's not always easy. And this time of God growing them and stretching them can be really hard. And so just pray for them. Inevitably, you know, all of their cars die right in the middle of Oyama and they don't have lots of money to fix it. So, you know, as much as you can think of us in that way, we, we love, we covet your prayers. Um, pray for also just in a broader sense for Oregon, yes. you know, pray for workers um, and, and pray for the lost. It's, you know, you see more and more, it's like, man, Oregon is lost and it needs Jesus. And so overall, like we, we want to be part of that also is just seeing Oregon saved um, in whatever way that, that that happens, whatever way God uses that. So pray for that. Um, and, and secondly, you know, obviously we we do this full time. This is, you know, mostly most what is what he does full time. This is what I do. And 
We also just covet your, you know, your finances as far as helping us in any way that you can. And this church is a great partner with us, with Tom. So thank you for that. We could not do this without um, your guys' prayer and financial support. And so we just want to thank you for a long time of that. Um, this It's amazing to see you know, churches of all different shapes and sizes and all different communities love us in that way. So we're going to pray and we want to play specifically, pray specifically for you. And thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of your church. We can't wait to get to meet some of you more and thank you again. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for the opportunity to be used by you. God, I'm so thankful for new life, God, and for what you're doing in the, in the hearts of your people. God, I thank you so much that you call us. God, that that you give us unique passions and you give us mission. God, I pray that you would help us to always be growing, always be going, Lord, and always be giving our lives away. God, thank you so much for everything that you're doing. God, we know that you're not done with this church. God, that you have more for Sherwood. God, that you have more for Pastor Terry. You have more for Pastor Adam, Lord, that you have a plan for the people of this congregation. God, thank you so much for allowing us just to be a very small part of it. God, we're excited to see what you're going to do, and we just pray that you would show up and you would continue to show us your faithfulness. God, thank you so much. We pray all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thanks again to Brittany and Damien uh, for sharing that word with us this morning. Uh, It's so awesome to be to hear other people talk about what God's doing and the different stories that God has in their lives. And just to be challenged a little bit to get out in our communities and, and share with the people around us. How are, Again, how are you growing? How are you going? And will you give your life away for what Jesus has called you to do? So this morning, I uh, just want to, again, thank them for being here. If you want to give, you can do so by giving online, go to our website, SherwoodNewLife.org, and you can give online there. If you would like to give directly to Brittany and Damien and support their ministry, you can do that at our website as well. Um, stay tuned with us. You can put in prayer requests uh, through the website. We'd love to get to know you, so fill out that contact form. If you haven't done so already, we'd love to get to, to know you a little bit and text and email, whatever that your best way of communicating online is, and we'd just love to hear from you. Again, thank you for being here with us this morning. Have a fantastic week. We'll see you next week.